So good morning, everyone. I'm going to ask you a simple question. So today we have a very interesting lecture to go through, which is really about finding a major or finding a direction in your life. We wanted to basically provide you that framework that we think is going to be useful. Hopefully at the end of the lecture, for ones who are certain about your future is have you to rethink about it a little bit, right? We examine a little bit, okay, to be less certain. <laughs> And for the ones who are sort of confused about what to do, hopefully we're going to give you a framework where you'd be like, okay, I know exactly what to do at this point. Um, yeah, so today's lecture um, is really about figuring out or give you a framework in terms of like how you want to, how you can actually pick a major or a career. Okay. And we thought this is, you know, pretty important topic. Uh, this is actually one of the reasons why we founded AI Camp in the first place. Um, I would say, to be honest, like we're not here to really teach you about AI. We're here to, although, you know, all the major content and everything is around AI, but um, at least from my point of view, what I want to do is really help you to pick a major and career. And when you're going through this, building this AI product, you know, it's a complicated process, right? You will learn a ton of AI, a ton of engineering throughout the process. And hopefully, you know, when, once you, you know, graduate from AI camp, you know, you will become basically um, knowledgeable in that field. Uh, and also you can become an ambassador, right? For, you know, AI. But uh, equally important, if not more, is that we wanted to provide you this experience in crafting this product. And as you are crafting this product, you sort of like experience different roles, right? In, in industry, right? So for example, at a blend, when we making our product, uh, the seven steps that I you know, told you guys about creating this AI product, um, we follow almost exactly the same thing. And every single you know, step, however, there is someone, right? Whose job is to make sure that step is done well. Okay, so by going through and building this AI product, you get to experience those roles. Okay, which I think is pretty cool, pretty uh, critical data points that we need to we need to uh, pick up. So the bigger question here, right? The big question here is, what should I do in my life, right? And what I'll start it by you know first just telling you, um, there there's so many different, I guess, advices out there to tell you what you should do, right? To you know, in your life. And I guess, you know, the first one, right? Follow your passion. I think that would be a very common advice. How many of you heard about that advice? Follow your passion. We all heard about that, right? I think uh, a famous one, you know, have you guys seen that um, um, Steve Jobs gave a speech um, at a commencement? I think it's around early 2000 or something. Yeah. Uh, and, the, and I think, you know, he gave a couple of lessons and follow your passion is definitely one of them. There's some other, you know, advices out there, right? For example, like do what you're good at, right? Do what's easy, right? And third one is, you know, it could be just like you follow the money, right? Uh, as long as, you know, that major can get, get you get your job, get you, you know, good money, maybe do that, okay? So I want to tell you a little bit of my own story. And I think, you know, each um, point here, I have, you know, basically some reflections and I think maybe this will illustrate, you know, some learning points for you guys. But I started my career asking my dad, what should I do? And uh, then I majored, you know, in physics. I started physics at Caltech. Uh, and then I decided to go to Stanford, you know, for a PhD in physics. And then now I'm working in data. Right. I guess when I was 17 or, you know, 18, you know, somewhere, you know, sometime around that. Um, I just got into a university and, you know, at the time I can choose essentially whatever major that I want to major. Right. Uh, and I would just literally ask my dad, what should I do? And my dad essentially spent maybe five seconds thinking about it. And he was like, I don't know, maybe just majoring computer science. Right. But this turns out, you know, it's pretty bad advice because uh, I eventually, I actually disliked the coding in, in the beginning. Maybe just because I was, you know, learning C as a starting language, it was pretty hard. But when you think about it, this is not a good process in terms of making a decision, right? Because chances are our parents, they're not experts on all subject matters, right? And also, you know, the, the, the kind of crucial thing is here, that is, 
the future is changing rapidly. When you look at the future, you know, uh, whether it's about information um, technology or just how the pandemic is affecting all of us, uh, we should take a harder look of, you know, what's changed, right? Look at the broader field to make a decision as opposed to, for example, listen to our parents, right? I'm not saying we shouldn't listen to our parents. Of course we should, right? I mean, for certain things. Um, but, you know, you have to have critical thinking when you're taking their advice. And then I got into Caltech. Uh, so that was around early 2000s or so. And uh, I decided to major physics. So that was basically my first change of major, right? From, you know, computer science to physics. And what happened was, you know, in the beginning, it was just so easy for me because I don't know, my brain was, you know, wired in such a way that I just love like thinking about these physical problems. Like imagine, you know, I can, I can literally do integration in my mind, right? Like I, I love that. Um, and I had a good GPA as well. I had a 4.0 GPA. Uh, but the kind of problem is I never thought about beyond, for example, getting this bachelor degree, what's afterwards, right? I never thought about that. So, you know, I, I think, you know, once you go to college, you're going to meet so many people. I, I'm probably going to, you know, call it out and using, uh, and, and probably it's not, it's not a, it's not a good thing, but you're going to meet a lot of people who major in economics and the whole reason they told you why they major in economics is because it's easy. Right. And uh, you will see that that, you know, later in life, that's also a bad way, you know, to make a decision because, you know, you only focus on very short term. Right. You're missing the whole point. And then uh, after Caltech, I went to Stanford and did a Ph.D. there. And the reason why, you know, for example, right after graduation from Caltech, I went to Stanford is because that's pretty much everybody else at Caltech what they did. I think majority of the people at Caltech, you know, we're like small community. Um, every year, you know, we graduate around like 200 something people. The whole population of undergrads is around like less than a thousand. And the majority of them they actually do go to grad school and pursue a PhD because, you know, Caltech emphasize on technical training and technical innovation. And at the time also, I had some unrealistic expectation of science. That is, I thought, you know, doing science was great, although I don't know exactly like the daily life of scientist or what's the career progression for a scientist. A PhD, literally you have to treat it as a job. Okay, it's a job. And this job is low pay. So like I think at the time at Stanford, I was paid maybe $2,000 a month, $2,000. Yeah. And then uh, Stanford took away maybe more than half or half of it somewhere in there that is you know you have to pay for your health insurance you have to pay for your of course your uh, housing right so you're left with maybe a thousand dollar i don't know what i did i was able to save money <laughs> you know during that period of time right i was able to save money uh and then also there's no direction right i mean there's there's very little guidance and you're on your own to conduct like cutting edge research and it's a long journey, right? It's a long journey. I remember when I was doing my PhD, uh, there was this grad student. Uh, he was my you know, grad student mentor and he was really, really good. And he told me, Michael, look, um, the first two years at Stanford, you're going to learn a whole bunch of stuff. Okay. The second two years, you will do some research, but you're going to do it all around. And then the final two years, that's the time probably you will um, contribute to science. You probably will you know, collect some data that's very useful. I did not believe a single word what he said. I was like, I am gonna go to Stanford. I'm gonna, you know, uh, get this PhD done in three years. And then it turns out it was exactly what he said. It was almost exactly. The fourth year, I got my, all my results and it was, looks beautiful. I thought I had a breakthrough in my research. I showed to my advisor and it turns out we actually didn't really quite understand the results. The results were so complicated. We couldn't even put a, like a good explanation of what is really happening and we couldn't really publish that. And you can just imagine, right? It's like four years of work, right? Down in the drain, right? And then I have to get up again and try to do that. But I guess, you know, the, the key point here is that even though I did a lot of things at Stanford, I enjoyed it very much. You know, I met a in there. I met so many good people there. I do not regret that decision going to Stanford did a PhD there. But when you think about this career decision at that point, right, when I made that decision at Caltech, I was just following the trend, right? I wasn't really placed any critical thinking around that. 
And I guess what I want to tell you is that when you think about all my, you know, story here, right? Look, like I was, you know, one of the top students, like anywhere I go, right? And however, uh, when you think about, you know, the career decisions, I don't think I will, I spend enough time. Uh, I don't think I spend enough time to collect important data. I don't, I didn't really spend enough time to uh, critically thinking about these decisions, right? And this is the message I wanted to give to you, right? Which is, you are at AI camp, you're, you're devoting, you know, lots of your time to learning about new technology, learning about the future, right? Maybe you have other extracurriculum, you know, activities, but I want to encourage you to always come back to this question, right? That is, what should I do in my life? And, you know, place more importance in how much time you want to spend on that, place more importance in, in terms of how much you want to reflect on that. And I also want to give you a framework, okay, for you to think about those things. So what is the ideal job for me? You're at AI camp and this is the message, right? This is the message where um, this is the framework I want to give it to you for you to think about, you know, what, what kind of things you want to do in your life, right? That is use, to, use data to make a decision. Just like an AI algorithm where it can, you know, predict based on features, right? We need to basically collect these data, which are, you know, really important features for this decision, which is what you should do, you know, for, for, your, for your life, okay? Um, and we, we think about use data to make a decision, right? There are so many numerous examples where when people are using data to make a decision, the decision was a good decision, right? So when you think about, you know, like one of the biggest technology company, Facebook, the whole reason why they were growing, you know, like so fast at the beginning of the phase, as well as the middle of the phase, is because not only they had a great product, but also they had this culture of using data to make a decision. So for example, data scientists at a Facebook, they're not a separate department, right? It's not like, oh, people go into, you know, submit a request to say, hey, uh, Facebook, I, I, you know, like the data science team, I need to work on this um, product and give me some data, you know, how I should make my decision. Data scientists at Facebook, <clears throat> they are, they are basically part of the team. Meaning if you have a small pod working on some product, you're going to have a product manager, you're going to have engineers working on that, but also every single team has a data scientist, right? That data scientist, all that data scientist do is basically go and grab data, right? And analyze that data and find insight for that small team to make decisions. This is how Facebook, as well as Google, as well as Pinterest, how all these consumer companies grow to huge sizes, right? And they're impacting billions of people. And also when you think about, you know, our current pandemic, how could it be possible we can open our schools when we have 3 million people are infected by this disease. And the true infection rate could be 10 times of that, right? If we are actually opening our schools right now, I think we're putting everyone at risk, right? Everyone at risk. So when you think about also another important uh, question, what major I should choose at school, I strongly encourage you to use this philosophy, right? Which is use data to make a decision. You, know, you might be like, hey, Michael, what kind of data should I collect to make such an important decision? So I wanted to give you this six very important piece of data where you should look at, okay? But of course it doesn't really limit to, to those six and they're probably not you know, equal importance, right? Uh, and that really depends on your situation. So first of all, you want to see what does it do daily, right? Don't have illusions, you know, for example, like, oh, you know, for example, when I thought about data you know, scientists, at least, you know, what they do, oh, they just do research. Right? They just do research. Turns out that's completely not the case, right? When you think about you know, being a professor at Stanford or at any university, you actually have to do most of the time is writing. You have to write or grant proposals and try to get money for research. That, that is the most, common, most time you're gonna spend right, in terms of doing research. It's actually not about conducting the actual research. Also, what am I good at? Right, you wanted to do something where you, you're very good at, otherwise, you know, you won't stand out. Also, what do you want to do? 
right? What do you like to do? What do you enjoy, right? So sort of like you have to find the intersection, you know, of those three, right? Hopefully, you know, this job has something that you need to do every day and you're very good at it and you really like doing that, okay? So I'm not saying, for example, don't follow your passion. I'm just saying follow your passion is one of the criteria, right? Not the whole thing in terms of deciding what to do. And then we come down to also some realistic, um, you know, requirements. You know, for example, how much money it will make, right? And we're not talking about oh, high salary, low salary, mini salary. Give me the numbers. Give me the exact dollar, right? Give me a distribution. You learn about distribution, right? Did you learn distribution yesterday, right? Think about distribution, right? And also demand, right? If the job is like yeah, high salary, like heart surgeon, you know. Um, you know, brain surgeon, yeah, you know, half a million dollar a year. But the demand would be like, oh, at the San Jose area, there's one job, right? Then what is the chance for you to get it, right? Hmm. The demand could actually fluctuate because new technology, what or not, right? So that could be a data point you want to collect. Okay. Right. Uh, but I would say, um, do you need to worry about that? Yeah, you, you do need to, you know, you do need to. Um, you know, for example, in the introduction to AI uh, slides, I talked about how, you know, different computer vision algorithms can identify disease retina, right? And that's a, you know, a really concrete case where, you know, um, certain tasks in radiology, right, can be automated by AI. When you think about self-driving, I have a, another friend, I have a friend who works at this company called uh, Tu Simple, T-U Simple. And they're doing self-driving trucks for UPS. And when you think about if they can actually implement that, that means you know, there are tens of thousands of truck drivers, their job is at jeopardy. You do need to look at the demand, okay? And finally, once you figure out all these things, you'd be like, okay, well, I have several candidates, right? These are the candidates I, I, I wanted to do. Then it's time for you to break out, break down. That is, what are the steps for you to get there? Okay, so these are the data you want to collect. One thing I would say is that you should be not afraid of relearning things and reinventing yourself. Chances are you are very, uh, maybe some of you are very determined, you know, I'm going to go for this direction. But I'm going to tell you a, a, a business statistic, which might shock you, which is we change our careers every, every seven years. That's on average. Okay, on average, we change our career every, every seven years. And when I reflect on my life, oh my gosh, that was that was completely true. It's hard to escape statistics. Okay, that, that's something my life taught me. Um, as I said, the first mindset, you don't know it. You never tried it, you don't know it. Do not assume that, find it out, right? That's the first mindset, you know, you wanted to um, make sure it's clear. And then what is your daily? One of the most important things you can find it out is basically by trying it yourself. For example, like in AI camp, right? We take you to do this product, right? I still remember how happy uh, AD and Brandon you guys are once you get your computer, you know, code working, right? Th that is the joy once you get some computer code working, right? And you experience that and you can take that as a very good experience and maybe you can apply that, you know, to your later decision making, right? And I guess the third way to really know is to ask people. So people are not gonna write, you know, too much about their failures or the pain points they went through, unless, you know, maybe there's a glorious, you know, ending, right? So it's really important to ask people those, you know, nitty gritty details, right? And be extremely curious about that, right? And there's one way to do it, which is called information interviews. You ask people who have already done those things, right? And you ask what their daily life is like, okay? That's called information interviews. So maybe, you know, a week later, um, we're going to teach you how to conduct information interviews. As I said, a salary is important. Money is important. Uh, money is necessary, right? Money is not evil. Um, and you can easily collect that data, okay? So for example, I'm collecting Twitter senior data scientist salary in San Francisco, right? You can see, you know, the average additional pay is around, uh, or average base pay. So those are just like cash, $172,000. Right, there are more stock options and stuff like that. 
So there is this, this website called Glassdoor. So Glassdoor is this place where, you know, people submit reviews about the companies as well as, you know, for example, the salary. So AI researcher, and I just say, I'm going to search it in Palo Alto and I'm going to look at jobs or salaries. There are numerous ways to get this data. You know, for example, in Glassdoor, there is this open data, uh, but also you can get it uh, from LinkedIn. Uh, and sometimes, you know, if you're in the startup community, uh, there are consultancies that actually com compile different startups, all the salaries combined together to essentially, <laughs> I don't know, like encourage all the CEOs to give just the market rate, you know, so that we don't compete you know, against each other. AI researcher salaries in San Jose, California. Do you see that? So this is, you know, $132,000 a year. Yeah, these, these seem pretty low. These, these are lower than I thought. I mean, this data actually surprised me. Maybe this data is, you know, trustworthy. Maybe it's not, I don't know, but at least you should collect some data. I think uh, software engineers, they make more money or less money than AI researcher. Is there more money or less money? Collectively less. What about, you know, look at the entry level. It's less. Guess what? The majority was wrong in terms of how much money it's going to make, right? And this again, guys, looking at the data, don't assume. We do not know, right? I've been in this whole thing for about 10 years now. I, I thought I knew, but... Turns out I was wrong. What about demand though? How do you find demand? So one way you can find demand is looking at how many people are posting for these jobs. So for example, I can search for AI researcher and I'm gonna search it in San Francisco. So AI researcher in San Francisco, let me search that. Okay, do you guys see that? The 62 AI researcher jobs in San Francisco, California. Do you see that data? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you have, you know, um, Google, of course, Scale AI. Scale AI is actually, you know, pretty good company. They're funded by uh, someone who's really, really young. Big Carriers, which is in Union City, they're, they're really good as well. They're, they're really good. They're doing um, robotic arms. Yeah. Okay. Grammarly, of course. Yeah. But this doesn't count like AI researcher, right? This is more like a management position. So we had to fit, filter out this data a little bit. But yeah, there's a whole bunch of research engineer. Open AI is a great company, right? Um, if you want to learn cutting edge AI, get into open AI. But there is only 62 AI researcher jobs in San Francisco. One more experiment. How many of you think we're going to have more jobs in AI research as opposed to engineering in San Francisco? Let's find out, right? So software uh, engineer, okay. Jobs in San Francisco. Did you guys see that? It's 5,033 in engineering jobs. Is 5,000 versus 62. Have you ever thought the contrast would be so huge? You never did, right? Okay, me either, me either, okay? Again, right, we do not know. Let's find out hard data, find out hard data, okay? I think all these data probably surprised you, right? Did it? Wow, data surprised us. I mean, it surprised me. It certainly actually should surprise you. So demand, right? As I said, you know, it doesn't really matter, you know, if people don't want it. So Google relative demand and collect the data, right? Mm -hmm. So we have this, you know, resume here. They just say you want to become a product manager, right? You want to become a product manager. Mm -hmm. And you can literally search for, you know, like AI researcher, right? Or product manager, right? Um, you know, at LinkedIn. And look at people's resume and see what are the steps that they took right? For them to get there, right? It's almost like, you know, you, 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 you can just look at their experiences to help you to get there. So I'm just going to go to LinkedIn and I'm going to search for machine learning engineer. Okay. Machine learning engineer. All right. Okay. So I have a few people here, machine learning engineer at Apple, Stanford AI grad. Okay. Interesting. So let's look at her journey. Okay. So uh, she went to North uh, Carolina State University, studied computer science, graduated in 2015. Looks like she did a master of computer science in 2017, and that's right after graduation. Oh, look, she actually did internships, right? During the time when she was at school, uh, she was a TA. We should totally get her to teach for us. And then um, she went to Facebook and did a software engineering, right, for about two years. And then she's doing machine learning engineer at Apple. So what can we learn about this, guys? Did she ever major in AI? Not really, right? But she took 
I guess she's a, like an AI student learning all about deep learning, computer vision, NLP, right? And uh, dealing with lots of data. But look, her degree, however, is in computer science is more engineering than artificial intelligence, right? And her job, right? Oh, look, she, so she's working in computer vision team, uh, Facebook AI, specifically the video understanding team, okay? Mm -hmm. So looks like, you know, right after graduation, she went to Facebook and did the AI stuff. So maybe Facebook doesn't have machine learning engineer, it's all called a software engineer, right? So maybe uh, we need to combine, you know, CS degree plus um, some, took some AI classes at, 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 at a uni, un, your university in order for you to do machine learning engineering, right? Do you see how to break down these things? Right, how that's useful for you to think about what you should do. Do you see that? So one thing about this resume, so uh, look, she's a product manager at Mode, right? So literally just started. But when you look at her education, she started computer science and statistics, right? That's really good because computer science and statistics, um, which you know combines computational statistics, right? Which is almost machine learning, uh, but she can actually use you know, her degree in computer science to lead engineers, because as a product manager, you have to lead a whole group of engineer. Also, she studied the statistics. So that means she can actually use data to make a decision, which is critical for being a product manager. You see that? Okay, that's why, for example, for her, you know, major in computer science and statistics, you can get a job easily as a, you know, product analyst, and work for that for about a you know, year and a half, right? And then she transitioned to product manager. You see these steps that she took? Again, you know, collect those data. If you don't know, for example, any of these data, right? Um, and don't assume that you know it, you know, go ahead and collect them, okay? So um, as a homework, as a homework, everyone needs to collect data for these six pieces of data. For three candidate jobs, that you think you wanted to do. And your job is to finish it and send it to your instructors. So basically, you know, everyone, uh, I think you guys should take notes now, right? Everyone needs to create three potential jobs and collect all these data and send it to your instructor. And we will give feedback to you. When you think about, for example, the this, this whole framework here, yes, you know, we're gonna have to apply it to first a few jobs. But when you think about, you know, the meaning of life and, you know, how would you find fulfillment at work and how do you do to be, you know, really, really happy, you know, at work? I mean, we spend, you know, insane amount of time at work. I actually love this framework called um, Mastery, uh, Autonomy and Purpose. Uh, so this is something, you know, there's a TED talk about it. Um, so I'll send that to you. Um, you can read that later. You can, you know, um, watch that later. But happiness at work is really break down into mastery autonomy and a purpose. And I will illustrate why, for example, you wanted to um, try to accomplish, basically you needed three components, right? In order to, for you to be very happy at work. Uh, but I would advocate you wanted to acquire mastery first, and then you can enjoy autonomy. And finally, you can choose whatever you want to do to fulfill your purpose, okay? And I really think there's nothing better than this. You know, for example, when you're really good at something, right? You, you have that mastery and then you'll work on something, anything you want, and then you'll work on something, you know, that, that really or meaningful to you, right? I think that would be, you know, pretty good life. So it would take a few steps for you to essentially gain mastery, autonomy, and, and purpose. And the way to think about it, you know, is first you, you want to be very good at something, right? You want to be, let's just say you want to be very good at um, AI research, right? And then you become the world-class um, talent in terms of doing weird research, uh, like, like AI research. And once you, you know, sort of like obtain that mastery, then people can start like trusting you and give you the autonomy for you to take any, you know, of your research to any direction you want, right? And when they do that, you can also, you know, start thinking about to do something, apply the AI research to something that you really, really care, right? And finally, once you have those three components, I would say, you know, it would be very satisfactory. So again, you get mastery first, and then you can enjoy autonomy. And finally, right, 
you can have your purpose. So in terms of what a major, you know, you wanted to do, you wanted to pursue, as I said, you know, first step, you want to hone your skills and become the best, right? So once you collected some of the data, you know, the initial direction, and now it's for you to get really, really good at something, right? Especially when you're young, you know, when you're, you know, at your age, you wanted to essentially just learn all the possible skills and become a world-class talent, right? In something that you're good at. So another couple of, you know, interesting points here I want to make that is you thought, you know, you're in school, you're learning a whole bunch of, you know, skills, taking different classes. Those are great. And probably once you get out of school, you don't have to, you know, learn it, learn it anymore, but that's completely not the case, right? I would say the real learning actually start, starts after, after your school, because whatever you learn at school, you know, most chances are they're not applicable to the real world. Like for example, I learned almost all my programming skills, all the AI stuff, right? Outside of school, right? So you should always keep this habit, right? That you're always learning. Second is building your resume is super important. You know, if you don't show people what kind of things you have done, then people probably don't know it, right? So, you know, joining AI camp and building this AI product is definitely one way to build your resume, right? Uh, really not many high school students can, can do that. The other thing you want to think about is to think about what kind of skills are transferable, right? That is probably so many things you learned, you know, at a school, I would, I'm just going to tell you they're not transferable, but there are so many skills that they are transferable, but it's understated. For example, writing, right? Writing is a really, really important skill, right? Communication, really, really important skill, right? So learn all these transferable skills. And how do you, for example, gain these skills, gain these data, as I said, you know, like two major things, try it yourself, right? Whether it's like AI camp or internship or mini project, right? Try it yourself is the most important thing. Information interviews, as I said, you know, what we're going to talk about, how we're going to conduct those things. What are the, what, what are information interviews? How we conduct those things, you know, a little bit later. Okay. So build your resume. You wanted to have a solid foundation. You wanted to basically make sure you have all the solid um, skill sets, such as engineering, math, writing, right? And you want to do something standing out. That is, don't do something where everybody else is doing, right? Do something where it's so interesting, innovative, and no, no one else is doing, right? Again, AI camp would be one of them, right? Uh, and also, you want to let people know, right? Like maybe, um, you know, put that on a blog, you know, maintain yourself, um, you know, personal website. In the third week, we're actually going to teach you how to make websites, right? So you, you should be able to, you know, put a personal websites up, you know, pretty easily. And finally, you want to build a community around you. You know, whether it's like starting a club or local community, right? Or once you go to, you know, college and, you know, just have a really good set of friends, right? Or actually like learning together, building something together, dreaming about the future together, right? You want to build a community around you. And you're going to be surprised that it doesn't matter how good you are. It always takes a network, takes a, a whole network of people for you to uh, get excel. So when you think about, you know, I just reflected my own experience, for example, um, I got my first job through um, knowing someone, right? Actually, second job too. Oh, third job as well. Actually doing AI camp, the same thing, right? It's all, you know, from a network that, you know, we got to know each other. Even, you know, for our instructors here, right? We Chen and Shan, I got connected to them, to them because uh, it's also through a network, okay? So, you know, getting to know good people, okay? And build a network. Okay, so I know this is a long lecture. Sometimes, you know, I'm just going to feed you a medicine where it doesn't really taste well, but, you know, it's going to be useful, right? And hopefully I provide you a little bit, you know, history and stories here and there. But to summarize, right, so you want to use data to make important decisions. You all have a homework, right? You need to create a Google Doc, okay, a Google Doc that contains all these data points for three potential jobs, and you want to send that to your instructor, okay, using Slack. Just send the link. And then I, I talked about the mastery, autonomy, and purpose, right? You gain mastery first, you're good at something, and then, right, people can let you do whatever you want to do, enjoy autonomy, and finally, you do something you want, right? You have the purpose, okay? And for now, focus on the first step. You're young, right? Mastery is the most important thing. Be good at something, okay? And finally, you know, always learn, right? Keep that learning habit, right? Be curious, you know, you have the whole... I mean, not all the knowledge, but you have a lot of knowledge on the internet, right? You can learn from the internet. And lastly, but not leastly, not least, uh, talk to people, right? Build a network. Mm -hmm.